Hi everyone, my name is Tiamo and my computer ate a piano. Uh, this is just going to be a short talk on how uh, technology has changed music over the years. So let's move on. You guys will see soon what I mean. I'd like to start with a quote from a legendary artist in South Africa. In the meantime, Hibiri, Hibiri, Hibiri. Thank you. Let's move on. So a very long time ago, right? Not so long ago, but a while back, like 80s. Um, recording studios are expensive. Uh, music production hardware was also very expensive. And as you can see from these images, these devices were large. Uh, they take up a lot of space, so you have to have big spaces. This makes it expensive to use and own any of these. And they also look kind of ridiculous. I mean, they're too large. Like, What are we doing with these things? So as technology improved, we got better. We made better things. Chips got smaller. We ended up with virtual instruments that run on computers and stuff. Well, first we went on zero racks and all this crazy stuff, making bigger things. So I don't think this is necessary. This is a lot. I mean, it's cool, but it's too much. But we ended up uh, downsizing. We were able to make smaller analog um, analog hardware, uh, base synthesizers. We've got some uh, virtual synthesizers that run on the computer alone. So uh, they're dependent on your own computer's processing power, which brings a lot of advantages because we can now run multiple instances of different synthesizers. So a synthesizer, just to keep it simple, it's something that makes noise, generates noise. Let's move on. So generally with virtual instruments today, we have synthesizers and sample libraries. So on the left here, you'll see uh, our bottom left is a, is a VST or virtual instrument called um, Serum. This is used for sound design generally. And then on the right, I have a piano called The Gentleman, and it is 3.3 gigs in size. This is a sample library. So what they would actually do is record the... Um, actual piano playing and then we would trigger the samples from our own devices. So let's move on. So basically on computers today what we use because we have computers now and laptops. We have digital audio workstations, right? Um, these are software programs that are used for composing, producing, recording, mixing and editing audio and MIDI data. So uh, nowadays, there's a lot of popular ones like uh, we've got Fruity Loops down here. Let me turn on my pointer. We've got like Fruity Loops over here, Ableton, Studio One, Logic Pro. These are some of the most popular ones that we have today. And above here, this is what a digital audio workstation would generally look like, where you have multiple tracks. You can see there's audio data, there's MIDI data, I believe. No, no, no MIDI data. And then there's here a virtual instrument that has been loaded in. This is a virtual instrument owned by PreSonus, the guys who make this DAW Studio One called Impact. So this is like a little drum machine that you can load samples into, and this is regarded as a virtual instrument. Okay, so now to the part about how my computer eating a piano. So there's, I spoke about sample libraries and I spoke about synthesizers, right? So the synthesizers generally aren't great at creating sounds that sound the same as actual instruments like a piano, which is a very difficult uh, instrument to synthesize. So um, there's a company called Piano Tech. They have been doing this for about 10 years, if not more, and they've actually done quite a good job of uh, imitating the sound of a piano. Um, I've got two videos here, so we'll start with this one. Uh, the top video is a video of what um, the uh, a sample library, like a uh, contact would sound like, the actual instrument I showed you earlier, the sample library I showed you earlier. So this is a demo of what it sounds like. I don't know if everyone can hear it. So it sounds, I mean, it sounds like a piano. You can hear it sounds like a piano. It doesn't sound like anything weird or fake or nothing like that. So this library to get pianos that sound like this would be a whole three gigs to download versus the piano tech synthesizer, which is just 
40 megabytes. It sounds just as good, if not better. So I don't know if I've made sense about my piano eating, um, well, my computer eating a piano. Um, basically, we have access to software that will allow us in our computers compose and make any sort of music we want with the most realistic sounding instruments. Like, not doesn't sound exact, exact, but it's pretty close. Like, you won't even be able to tell. It's pretty convincing. Uh so now for the demonstration, uh, I'll be taking us through uh, just a simple example of the Web Audio API. So uh, the Web Audio API is it's it's an API that uh, we can use to synthesize, load uh, audio samples, add effects, and all sorts of things. So. How it works generally is that we have an audio context and this deals with uh, all audio that is occurring in the browser. And we have, like you can see in the diagram, inputs, effects, and destination. So these would all be regarded as nodes. Um, the destination is where your audio would end up, your speakers. The effects is any processing you would do to your sounds and the inputs is the actual sounds you'd be creating. For an example, we could take it as media element, we could create a media element uh, create a gain node and attach it to the media element and then attach that gain node to our speakers, the destination. And these audio nodes being connected would be referred to as the audio graph. Um, so I also used web MIDI for the, for, the, for the demo. So MIDI stands for Music Instrument Digital Interface. It is just a protocol that allows communication between computers, musical instruments, and other hardware. So the devices that you see on the screen, these are uh, all MIDI controllers uh, that you can use to actually you know, mess with the stuff. Uh, well, send MIDI messages. Um, so generally, the MIDI messages come in three parts. You get uh, whether it's a note on, a note off, the actual uh, MIDI value, the actual, uh, well, in this case, it wasn't a CC in the web audio, like it was a number, and then the velocity. So I could use the note or the number to identify which pad on a specific device was clicked. And yeah, here's just a little bit of code uh, from the actual uh, demo that I'm gonna show you guys now. So first off, we have to check, ah, no. First off, we have to check if the browser supports MIDI and all of that, and then we connect the actual MIDI device, the code for that's not there. And then what I did is I just loaded up a, a, a random snare. Um, I have a function here that sets up the sample for us, and then we create a buffer source. Uh, this is now our audio node. So it, with the Web Audio API, every time you create um, like an audio node that makes sound or an oscill like for an oscillator, for example, uh, it gets destroyed immediately after you've used it. So you have to keep making a new buffer every single time you play the sound. Um, a couple other nodes I added here was an analyzer node, a gain node, and a reverb node. And then when you want to play your sound, whether it's an oscillator or a sample, you just call start on the buffer that you received and you provide the current time for the actual clock, not like uh, set timeout and stuff. This runs on a slightly different clock. It's for the clock for the audio context. So do you want some more? It's time for the demo. Uh, let me quickly, I don't believe I'm sharing the full screen. Let me share again.
Yeah, that's it.